Hey everyone, and welcome to another video of Eat Well of Allergies. So, as you can see, I'm not at the kitchen, so, or in the kitchen, I guess. So, this video is about what I do for allergy attacks. So, as I said in my allergy story, I have a process of what I do for when I am having an allergy attack. So, the first thing I do, this is currently, it says Tylorzets, it's filled with Advil or ibuprofen. So the first thing I do is I take a couple Advil to help with pain or swelling. And the next thing I do, if that doesn't work or calm down my breathing or that kind of stuff, is actually after taking the Advil, I take my inhaler, my Pro Air Respa Click. So how this one works is I'm not going to actually click it, but if I pull this back, further, it will trigger the medicine going into the inhaler and all I have to do is breathe. So I take two puffs of that before I take anything because usually it's my breathing that's um, prohibited first. So I try to get Advil to go down the swelling in my throat and I take this to help my breathing. If those don't work, I take two Benadryl. It depends on how bad the attack really is. Sometimes I only take one, but usually it's two. So this is filled with 25 milligrams per pill for Benadryl. So Benadryl, some people, um, it affects them differently. Some people, uh, the executive pastor at our church took one Benadryl and she was knocked out for an entire day because she was having an allergy attack. When I was younger, I had to take a lot of Benadryl because I was either scratching, sleeping, watching, and mostly it was sleeping. So, ignore the footsteps upstairs. I don't know if you can hear them or not, but <laughs> I'm doing this in the basement because everywhere else someone's walking. So I take two Benadryl and that's what it takes to knock me out. One Benadryl, I can work through the day, but two Benadryl, it basically means I can barely walk because it's, it's shutting down my body to sleep. So I take two Benadryl after the Advil and the RespaClick, which is basically an inhaler. So those are the three first things you use. The next is an EpiPen. Now some, this is a very high tech EpiPen. <laughs> the people in the hospitals, we have a paramedic in our church and he says we, they still use a stick. It's kind of, I can't really, uh, imagine this a little skinnier and a little longer and that's what I'm putting into my hip or my thigh actually so this it actually talks to you I don't know if it'll it triggers if I I don't I don't usually the only time I've used this is once and that was in a restaurant when I had butter so, how you use this is you pull it out and it talks to you. Now, for the beginners and for someone who doesn't know how to do an EpiPen, that's very handy. But for people who know how to do this, it's very irritating because you don't know if you can actually do it before it's done talking. <laughs> so you have to wait like 10 seconds while it's done talking before you can shoot it into your thigh. And the thing is that, I don't know if I mentioned this in my allergy story or not, but an EpiPen is basically a shot of adrenaline into your system to keep you going until you can get to a hospital if it's bad enough. And the only time it's been bad enough is when I've smelled peanuts and I've had to take two of these. Now the thing is that these are 0.3 milligrams each. So I had 0.6 milligrams of adrenaline into my body. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have on my water day. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so it's a lot of adrenaline and after these three things, the Advil, whoop, the Advil, the RespaClick, and the Benadryl, you're basically drowsy and then you take two or uh, one of these and it's a shot of adrenaline. So you're, you're shaking and you're drowsy. So you want to sleep and you can't sleep because the adrenaline's in your system. It's very irritating when your hands shake and you're about to fall asleep. 
So it's a very weird experience. And it, if some people, some people might have noticed, this is the little bag I carry everything in. It currently has some other stuff, a hairbrush, a comb, a flashlight for whatever reason. And my sister actually made it. <clears throat> Excuse me, my, my throat is wacky today. So my sister actually made this to, from scrap, scrap cloth. You can probably tell, I don't know. I actually am just noticing it now, but she made it from scraps of flat fabric my parents brought back from Nigeria. And it has a little strap that I can carry around because I have a lot of a lot of stuff that I carry around. But this is the most necessary thing I carry around, and I can it still fits a couple of things. Like I can put my iPad. I can carry my iPad with me. <clears throat> what is with my throat today? <laughs> so it is handy. I can fit everything into my bag. Um, so it currently has. That's how much space it has. I can fit everything I need into this little bag and I can carry it into restaurants so I don't have to carry my entire big bag on trips. And the last thing I want to show you is these allergy cards that I have. So these are the allergy cards that I have. My mother printed them up when I don't even know when, maybe seven or something. <laughs> so they just say, my name is Candace and I'm allergic to eggs, milk, and milk products, peanuts, tree nuts, and shellfish. And it also has a Spanish version. Me llamo Candace y soy alérgica a huevos, leche, catajuates, o mami. Nueca es de arboles, canjejos y camarón. That's basically shrimp, actually, but it's supposed to mean shellfish. So that's what I use for allergies because, or um, for restaurants because some people don't know what I'm allergic to. Like a lady at our church who cooks, we go to their house sometimes and she doesn't know, she can't remember what I am allergic to. So I gave her one of my cards and she just keeps that and whenever we come over she tries to maneuver the recipe around so I can eat it like shepherd's pie or, uh, or I think it was nachos or something but that's that it, these are really handy my mom my mom added the Spanish version later on but it's very handy and it actually had um, soy and sesame seeds on it before before I grew out of those so that's what I use for my allergy tax I in my allergy story I was planning on bringing these down here to tell all of you but my sister was asleep and I forgot them <laughs> so that one I'm gonna throw away so that is what I use for for allergies and all that kind of stuff so it it's really handy to know the process of what I use sometimes like if I'm passed out from an allergy tech and I can't breathe someone needs to know what to do everyone in my family knows how to do an EpiPen now they might it might be helpful to have it talking to you I have no idea because I've never passed out from an allergy attack I've always I know my body very well to realize what is happening to me so it really <clears throat> and it's most of the time I don't have to take more than two Benadryl and I'm fine but there's some worse attacks that I've had to take an EpiPen or two, like peanuts, milk, all that kind of stuff. Uh, eggs, I don't normally do go around, but there are, are occasions when I actually have those. But the thing is that my allergies are so bad, I can't, sometimes I smell egg and my throat closes up just from the smell of it. So I can't cook egg at all because the smell will get into the air and milk sometimes even if i splash some on my skin i'll get hives because of the the response to my skin and milk eggs and peanuts we can't have them in the house tree nuts we can have them in the house but people have to wash their hands after they eat them and sometimes my breathing gets pro um gets a little iffy <laughs> if I'm too close and smell them. And shellfish, we can't have them in the house. My siblings sometimes want to cook them, but we can't because I'm allergic to them and I can't smell them cooking. Like, 
once we went to Louisiana for a, I think it was a not a crayfish bake or something like that. I had to go away from that place because it smelled like crayfish or um, whatever it was. And it was shellfish. So I had to go into the church. It was outside. And I had to go into the church because my breathing was starting to get prohibited. And it it's a little iffy. And my, uh, so my family cannot have any raw shellfish in the house. They can have cooked shellfish. Well, let me, let me rephrase that. They can have cocktail shrimp in the house. Sometimes even when for some, sometimes for Christmas, my parents get crabs or lobsters for, for Christmas dinner. They can't do that anymore because my breathing prohibits or stops almost every time they do that because it the smell is all the way over the house and it's making my breathing sparse so <clears throat> excuse me so that's that's all basically about what I do for my allergies for at least the allergy attacks if I mean rephrase that and um for my allergy attacks so I'll see you next time when I'll be talking about terms that you may not know what they refer to in baking and cooking, actually. So I'll see you next time when I do that. Please respond, please comment, like, all that kind of stuff. I'll see you next time.